Hey guys, Mike, your host of Craft Beer Storm on this Friday, April 2nd, 2020, Corona virus is still around and people are sequestered in their homes. Uh, but the first story allows you to get some beer to uh, that, that can be delivered to you or you can get beer to go in Massachusetts. But I hope everything is going well with you and your family is safe. And hey, if you uh, get a chance, go on iTunes, give us a rating, give us a review. Whatever platform you're listening on, I would appreciate it. Um, you know, it just gets us up in the rankings. It gets the word out there. You know, downloads are growing. It's awesome. But we need more. We need more of a push, more of a momentum to really get up there, you know. Um, in different countries, I get these emails like we're, I don't know, like number 27 in Denmark. <laughs> I don't know what the hell. I'll take it. I'll take it. But, um, you know, we want to be higher up in uh, the U.S. as well because this is generated from the U.S. and, and we have a large uh, beer drinking country and I love the rest of the world and I want to visit this corona craziness is done. I'm just going to get a one-way ticket, maybe go go west, keep going west, stop places. That's my plan. We have to figure that out. But today we're going to give you craft brew news, which we do every Friday. And the first story, as I mentioned, is Massachusetts lawmakers approve bill to uh, allow restaurants to sell alcohol to go. In the state of Massachusetts, which temporarily banned on-premise dining and drinking on March 17th, has taken a step toward approving to-go sales of beer and wine, something mo most other northeastern states have had in places since their on-premise bans began. I guess Massachusetts was behind. The state Senate passed a bill Monday that would allow licensed on-premise businesses to sell beer and wine for off-premise consumption. The measure would limit sales to wine and malt beverages sold in sealed containers. Wine must be in its original container, but the measure does not make the same stipulation for beer, which opens the opportunity for growler and crowler sales. So a lot of these restaurants have kegs sitting around, right? They got to get rid of this beer. No one can come in and get pints. They can go and uh, get growlers and sell it to go. And all sales of alcoholic beverages must be part of a transaction that also includes food. So you can order your food from there and you can order a beer, which I think is good. And governors of other states, uh, such as New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, have enabled on-premise to go sales through executive orders. I mean, they didn't go through the, the Senate. They just said, look, that's it. You know, executive order, we're doing it. So it's good that Massachusetts did it as well. It's good stuff. Stone Brewing versus Miller's lawsuit. Heads to trial in October. San Diego courted Stone Brewing's long-running trademark infringement suit against Molson Coors Keynote brand will move to trial in October. I don't know if you've seen it at the cans. They just blatantly say stone. <laughs> it's supposed to be Keystone, but they put stone on it. And Stone's like, wait a minute, that's our name. What are you doing? And they have a, a patent on it, but as the story goes, or, or you know, like a... Uh, uh, they have intellectual property. So Stone first brought the lawsuit against Miller Coors, uh, the U.S. Uh, business unit of Molson Coors, uh, which is now known as Molson Coors Beverage Company because they don't just do beer anymore. They do everything else. Alleging that the April 2017 packaging and marketing refresh of the company's Keystone Light brand that more prominently uh, featured... Um, the uh, word stone infringed the craft brewery's intellectual property. The years-long lawsuit has centered on the strength of Stone Brewing's trademark in earlier finding. The uh, court ruled that the stone mark was conceptually and commercially strong and recognizable based on evidence Stone presented at that time. Uh, which included the 1997 filing of its mark. Because the mark was not contested for five years, it earned incontestable status. So that's what one of the courts said. And then Miller Coors had ar has argued that the stone trademark is conceptually weak because at least 10 other craft breweries actively use the word stone in their name. Data submitted showing that 53% of beer drinkers surveyed had never heard of stone brewing suggested that the stone mark is commercially weak. 
This can this disconnect will be determined by a jury. So now it's going to jury trial, right? Stone Brewing is seeking to recover the one billion would it be in infringing sales that Keystone has made since the lawsuit began. In a statement, Stone Brewing CEO Dominic Engels called the move forward uh, forward to a trial, a good day for independent craft beer and our employees. So that's it. Stone is not giving up. I don't know how much this is costing them. Miller Coors, I don't, you know, I don't know how much it's costing them. It could go to jury trial. You know, they got until October. They can probably settle it. But both both sides seem to be uh, bent on uh, what what they what they believe. And there you go. Constellation Brands Mexicali Brewery hits a roadblock, and Constellation Brands one point four million brewery. Uh, one more from a dollar brewery in Mexicali, Baja, California, Mexico, was rejected during a local referendum last weekend. With 76.1 of the voters opposing the project, according to Mexico News Daily. The project was first announced in January 2016 and is expected to be completed by Feb- fiscal year 2023. So they already started with this, <laughs> and, he, and I guess everybody said no. Residents are concerned the brewery will use too much water, and the National Water Commission will not provide necessary permits to open the brewery. Deputy Interior uh, Minister for Democratic Development of Social Participation, Diana, Diana Alvarez, said. In a statement, Constellation CEO Bill Newland said the company would continue working with local authorities, government officials, and members of the community on next steps related to our brewery construction product in, project in Mexicali and options elsewhere in Mexico. So Cowan analyst Vivian Azer noted that the rejection of the Mexicali brewery raises several questions, including capacity constraints beyond fiscal year 2021, and cash outlays. This constellation has already invested nine hundred million into the, in the plan. So they poured like almost a billion dollars into this, and then like, nah, I don't want it here. That's a problem, I think. I don't know. Shouldn't they have gotten that before they invested any money? Maybe getting get clearance instead of just doing it. I don't know. A lot of money being thrown around. Judge re- rejects a uh, preliminary injunction against Molson Core Vizzy Seltzer with a V. That's their next story. A federal judge has denied a request for preliminary injunction by Future Proof, the parent company of Brizzy, would it be Seltzer Cocktails, which has sought to block Molson Core's beverage company from launching the Vizzy, would it be? Hard seltzer line. Molson Corps Chief Communications Corporate Affairs Officer Adam Collins said in a statement, the federal judge's ruling confirms that we always maintained and we have the right to launch and fully support Vizzy, a new differentiated hard seltzer with antioxidant vitamin C from Acerola Superfruit that has retailers and distributors excited. Future Proof, the Austin, uh, Texas-based maker of Brizzy, filed a lawsuit against Molson Coors last month, claiming that Vizzy infringed on the trademark that it has for Brizzy, which it filed for November, in November 2018. So Molson Coors, what are you doing, man? You're taking everybody else's names. You know, Stone, Vizzy, what's happening? What's going on with that company? I guess they have a lot of money. They can do this. You know, but these smaller companies are just going to get, you know, you, they probably go broke trying to defend themselves. Call something else, man. I don't know. I don't know. It makes you think. But uh, that's what we have the legal system for. They have to decide. In the meantime, have a beer. And uh, be careful. Keep Keep your family safe. Don't get psycho because of the coronavirus. You know, there's a lot of widespread panic. I have my other podcasts, Crushing Your Fear. We're getting people on every day just talking about it and what you can do. Move around, keep moving, go for walks, spend time with your family. Also, this is awesome time to think. Think about what you're doing. Think about, you know, uh, how your life is going and, you know, maybe plan, plan. Because nobody wants to be in a situation like this, but you never know what can happen in the future. 
So that's what, that's what my two cents. But we talk about that in Crushing Your Fear, shameless plug, Crushing Your Fear podcast. Available on iTunes as well. <laughs> but hey, if you got time, check it out. And also, you know, give us a rating and review on Craft Beer Storm. I would appreciate it. I'm so upset that the CBC got canceled, but what are you going to do? I'm looking forward to the GABF. Hey, I, I was talking to one of the breweries. Maybe we'll take one of my recipes and, and we'll make it and we'll enter it into the competition. We'll see. I got to get I got to get in touch with them. That's what I could do now. I get in touch with them and maybe go brew some beer. Bang. All right, guys. I uh, appreciate you tuning in and uh, we were going to talk to you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Take care.